There's some controversy in Colorado after a judge drastically reduces the bond of a funeral home owner facing numerous charges, including theft, money laundering, and abuse of a corpse. Bond was reduced from $2 million down to $100,000 for John Halford, who's co-owner of the Return to Nature Funeral Home. Officials say nearly 200 seemingly abandoned bodies were improperly stored at his facility. An investigation began after neighbors complained of foul odors. Halford and his wife, Carrie, were arrested when decomposing human remains dating back to 2019 were found. The couple had allegedly fled Colorado to try to avoid prosecution. And now the EPA has deemed that site hazardous and the case is sparking a push toward tougher licensing regulations for funeral home directors. So there's a lot to dig into now. Joining me is for a closer look, let's welcome in trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris. Uh, Misty, there's a lot going on with this one. First, let's just talk about what happened most recently. There was a court appearance yesterday. Let's start with the argument for and against releasing details of the arrest affidavit because that came up as well. It has yet to be released. Uh, obviously, it likely contains some gruesome details, but should it be released? Yeah, this is really interesting, Nicole, because this is a central point of what happened at yesterday's conference. This affidavit, according to the defense attorney, has in it something that's beyond comprehension. He talks about the conditions of the body and the way that it's laid out in the affidavit being so gruesome and including photographs that if it were to be released publicly, it would basically eliminate the possibility of the defendant having a fair trial. So that was the defense argument. The prosecution's argument is as it usually is that there is transparency in, in the criminal justice system and that the affidavit should be released as would be typical protocols. This issue falls within the judge's discretion to weigh whether whether or not it would be too prejudicial. The other part of the defense argument in the affidavit is included evidence that might not ultimately be admissible. However, Nicole, it's important to remember, in an arrest affidavit, it doesn't mean that every single thing will ever make it into a courtroom. That's as a matter of course in any case. So my guess, we're likely to see this. I bet the judge is going to reserve decision until his wife is back in court in about a week and a half. All right, so Missy, I do want to talk about jury selection but first let's get to the other part of this um so we know that john halford's bond was re was reduced as we said at the top of this from two million originally cash only down to one hundred thousand that is a very big drop does that make sense to you so it might make sense to me in other cases because oftentimes uh, the defense will interpose motions and lay out information to the judge that will result in a reduce a reducement of the bond and a significant one in, in some cases. However, in this case, what I found interesting is that prosecutors presented text messages which tended to show that this particular defendant, Halford, was looking to evade law enforcement. And the judge actually determined that the text messages were shown without context, so he ultimately reduced the bond. But I was surprised because the two primary factors in any case when we're talking about bond is whether the person is a flight risk or whether the person is a danger. Now, maybe not a danger, but that issue of flight risk, when you had uh, individuals who tried to evade law enforcement before arrest, you usually don't see a reduction like this. So yep, it was no. interesting to say the least. Right, and exactly. I think we'll see the same thing happen to his wife it's, in, it's a, in a couple of days. It certainly was surprising, like reading that part that they had, they had, they had tried to flee. Uh, Missy, do you think this case will be more difficult when it comes to selecting a jury compared to maybe most court cases? Well, it's going to have really, really tough facts, Nicole. Again, we heard that there's going to be photographs and the grisly conditions of the bodies in addition to financial crimes. Uh, there's like 160 charges relating to the bodies. The allegations are that ashes were fake that were given back to families. So it's certainly going to be an emotional case. It will be a difficult jury selection, but like in any case, the voir dire process will find jurors who are going to be impartial, and that's going to be the key. All right. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.